Sight Club. Barry McGuigan is a former champion boxer. In June 1985, he beat Eusebio Pedrosa to become the featherweight champion of the world. In the following extract from his autobiography, Cyclone, he remembers this iconic fight. It was an epic battle that lasted a full 15 rounds, and it remains one of sport's greatest moments. He currently enjoys a successful career as a sports commentator, writer, and motivational speaker. He is president and founder of the Professional Boxing Association and is a boxing promoter and trainer. He has coached his youngest son, Shane, to national titles in England and Ireland. 8th of June, 1985. I had never set foot in Loftus Road before the Pedrosa fight. In fact, I never went back until 2005 when I was filming a program for Sky Sports to mark the 20th anniversary of my winning the world title. I did not recognize anything as we were driving in until we got to the entrance and I saw this flash of blue on the outside of the building. And then it all came back to me. Suddenly, I could remember it all as though it was yesterday pulling up, walking straight through and down to where the dressing rooms were. I was in the home dressing room that night, Pedrosa, the away. The fight was a 27,000 seat sellout. By the time we got to Loftus Road that evening, driving from my central London hotel in the Team McGuigan bus, most of the fans were already inside. Earlier in the day, we had used the bus as a decoy. Driving to the weigh-in in a separate car to avoid the crush of fans. That evening, with fight time approaching, the streets were quieter. I still recall seeing a fair few supporters milling about and making their way to the stadium. What I really remember about arriving was the noise. You could hear this buzz from inside the ground and that really pumped me up. As we waited in the dressing room, it built and built and got louder and louder. Because the fight was on television, everyone knew exactly what time I would be coming out. The closer it got to my entrance time, the more the expectation and the atmosphere grew. When all that was going on, Pedrosa's people were still trying to pull their tricks. We had sent my brother Dermot into Pedrosa's dressing room to watch him bandage up. Pedrosa's manager, Santiago Del Rio, came in to watch me. Dermot didn't tell me until afterwards, but Pedrosa played a cool in front of him. He looked huge, Dermot told me later. Big, muscular arms and completely relaxed. He was chatting away in Spanish and looking at my brother and smiling confident as you like. Dermot watched the bandages being wrapped and told them they were fine. Del Rio came in to watch my hands being bandaged. He was determined to do what he could to wind me up. What you do with the hands is you wrap your surgical bandage back and forth over your knuckles to build a pad. The knuckles are the first point of impact. It is where the energy and trauma are absorbed. Therefore, you try to protect them by creating a pad with the bandage. Del Rio was watching all this carefully, same as we had always done them. He said, what is this? Let me see that. So we showed him and he shook his head. Too much, too much. We took it all off and had to start again. He was still complaining. I lost it. I swore at him and said, for fuck's sake. Del Rio looked at me and said, mm, okay, okay, right. He left because he had achieved what he'd come to do, to get me going. Del Rio had succeeded in that and did not even stay to watch us do the other hand. I was annoyed. 
really annoyed. But I'm not sure that his plan really worked. The incident just served to pump me up even more. Not that I needed it. I was already on a high. But after that, I was really revved up. I gloved up and the noise outside was rising to a crescendo. All you could hear was this thump, 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 because the dressing room was right underneath the stand. Every time the door opened, this wave of sound from outside came crashing in. Someone with a set of headphones on came in and said, right, let's go. Because I was the challenger, I would be brought out first. We had the Rocky theme playing over the PA, public address system. Everyone has their music now, but I swear, honest to God, that we were the first to do that. The noise was so loud, so deafening, however, that you could hardly hear the music above the crowd. We came out and we were supposed to turn left and walk along the side of the football pitch by these metal barriers. Then someone out front took the decision not to go on our original route. We were not going to go left because there were all these people, thousands of them, standing in the way. There is no way we were going to move them all back without causing a scene. So we just got the barrier, lifted it up and out and went straight for the ring. We had to move around some seats saying, excuse me, excuse me to people. We walked to the ring like that. All in all, it took us 12 minutes to get from the dressing room to the ring. It was so slow and took so long that the American TV station broadcasting the fight had to keep going to ad breaks. <laughs> I could see how large the stadium was and how big the crowd was too. Everyone was getting excited. They were all up and cheering, but I just kept my head down as well as I could. I didn't want to make a big fuss. I just wanted to get to the ring. I had this guy, Vince McCormack, used to walk with me through the crowd before the fight with Sean McGivern, Barney Eastwood, and all my team. We had this routine where we would recite a little prayer as we walked to the ring. It was called Angel of God. Ever this day be at my side to light and guard, to rule and guide. It was as much routine as anything. Something to focus your mind with everything else going on. Such was the noise and the madness that night, you could not hear yourself think, let alone hear the words. So I just repeated them to myself over and over as we made our way towards the ring. I climbed through the ropes to more cheers and Pedrosa came in. There was no interruption with him from the fans. He just walked straight through. I was in the ring and moving around then. Within a few minutes, he got in on the other side of the ring. You couldn't make this up, but then a little guy dressed up as a leprechaun appeared. <laughs> that was Barney Eastwood's idea. He had heard and seen how Sean O'Grady in the States had a dwarf dressed up as a leprechaun in the ring before the fight. Throwing this magic dust to bring good luck. People from Panama are meant to be wary of old folk stories and Barney thought it might spook Pedrosa. <laughs> As if. But he got this act in, had him skipping and tumbling about the ring. I was not looking at Pedrosa, but glanced across the ring as this was going on and remember catching sight of his hooded figure. My father got up to sing Danny Boy. That was a big deal for me that he was there singing. Yet at the same time as he was singing and everyone was joining in, I had to separate myself from it and make sure that I didn't get caught up in the emotion of it all. As much as I wanted to listen to him, I had to let it wash over me and focus on the fight. While Dad was singing, Dermot shouted that Pedrosa was staring at me, giving me this dead-eyed stare. He was trying to psych me out, but actually it was the perfect distraction from the song. 
I gave him the stare back to let him know I was ready for him and meant business. I was there to do a job. I had to have my head right for potentially 15 flat out rounds. I had to be ready to push Pedrosa back and bully him, to take control and win the fight. That was my objective. Nothing could distract me from that. Not even the sound of my father leading the 27,000 fans singing this emotionally charged song. I figured I could always listen to that later. And I did. Many times. Especially after my father had passed away. I would listen to him singing and it always made me cry. But all that was for later. Much later. The ring was clearing. The noise was rising. The waiting was over. In front of 27,000 fight fans, 20 million watching at home, and God knows how many abroad, there was just me, Pedrosa, and 15 rounds to decide the featherweight championship of the world. If reading, writing, maths or technology is holding you back, free phone one 800 20 to see how we can help.